Hello everyone, how are you? This is Just Like You, Everyday People, Amazing Stories, episode number 32. Can you believe it? We are on the 32nd episode. Thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate it. We really appreciate it. Our guests appreciate it. And I'm just so overwhelmed by the response. So this show is about positivity. It's about people just like you with amazing stories. So I'd like to ask that if you have a story and we know you do, or you know someone who has a story, please make sure you get in contact with me. I would love to have you right here on the show. We are here 7.30 to 8 p.m. every Tuesday Central Standard Time. So just a few housekeeping issues. If the internet for whatever reason doesn't want us to be great and we get kicked off, we will be back. So 7.30 to 8 p.m. every Tuesday. And if something happens with the internet for some reason, we will be back. So let's get started. Um, Clyde, I see. Let's see. You're coming in. I'm going to scream. Clyde. <laughs> ah! What up, Sharon? What up, what up? Hi. It's all good. It's all good. You you represent you represent you represent the Republicans today? No, am I supposed to be? <laughs> no. You have on red, I have on blue. I'm just playing. Oh, I'm like this is you know what? I feel like I just look good in red. So I'm like, I'm gonna do it. No, you, you look good in everything. Stop playing. Thank you. I'm like, no, am I supposed to be? How are you? I'm fabulous, man. Huh? forever i know i've talked to you but i haven't but, seen you in forever but you don't you don't you don't look a day older than I, the first time from the last time i saw you no i'm not not a day older. <laughs> not a day older. right so for the so i'm gonna let clyde tell the story but i want to tell you real quick quick clyde you know you're like my brother and let me tell you guys for those listening let me tell you about clyde you come across every now and then you come across people in your life that like change your life. Now there are people that say they're going to change your life and transform your life. And you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there are people that actually do it. So Clyde is one of those people oh, wow. who's actually done it. He, we, we met and he invited me to a class and I said, Clyde, I am not coming to this class. I am not coming <laughs> to this class. I, the one part about no, like, don't you get, I'm not coming. He was like, T, just come check it out for the weekend. And if you like it, you can come to the, you know, the longer version. I was like, Clyde, I, you know what, dude? Like, I love you with all my heart, but I'm not coming to this whatever class you dreamt up. He paid for me to go to the class and said, if you don't mm. like, you remember that? Yep. You were like, you know, you, if you don't, if you get there and you don't like it or whatever, T, you can go. If it, if it moves you and transforms you, then you can stay. And to this day, not only are Clyde and I connected, but people from that class and I are still connected. Mm, and that's dope. Is really in the business of doing big things and transforming people in a lot of different ways. So I want him to tell you the different ways he's doing that. But this dude right here, he actually, not only does he say it, he lives it and he walks it. <laughs> and so, you know, there's a myriad of reasons why I love you, Clyde, but that is one of them. So I wanted to let everybody know, but... Let's get started because this is a half an hour. Or so as a reminder, we're well, here at seven thirty. Well, let, 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 me, let me just let me just say oh. thank you for being a for being a yes because you know you're up to big things. And when I met you, we were we were making a difference in the lives of young people. You know, uh, we had three hundred fifty kids from South Central Los Angeles mm -hmm. at a camp that it was it was off the charts, <laughs> <laughs> and um, <laughs> and um. And then, you know, and then I asked you to come and tell your story. You told me your story, which was amazing. And I'm thinking to myself, like, the average person would, would be sitting at home collecting SSI, you know, claiming about how the world's unfair to them and, you know, how life has beat them up. And uh, you weren't. You were just like, hey, well, you know, like, we got to do this. Life is, life is not waiting on me. It's not. And... I remember when you when you came to the class and you're speaking to all these gangsters, right? <laughs> and um, and so they're all listed. When 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 Taryn walks in, everybody's like, "What kind of problems she got?" You know, because you have the longer hair then, and mm -hmm. they're looking at you. You're all bodied up, and they're like, 
like damn they're like I, I could see everybody like like all the dudes you know like nudging each other like yo man you see that <laughs> and so um there was like man what what story she got and you told your story and they were like oh my god like you know i would have never looking at you i would have never thought you had any of that going on right you you've gone through more than 10 people could ever go through and you've just endured it and that was a hell of a message to send to them because no matter what they've been through like some of those guys looked at like man why the hell am i tripping like you know i like you know <laughs> i i don't know if i could have lived through that but the funniest thing was like um you remember when the guy they were like um we got a question for you. He's like, you can ask anything. And they were like, any, anything? And, and it was, <laughs> and you were like, anything. And it was like, can you still get it in? Yeah, I remember. I remember. I remember. <laughs> That's funny. That's I think funny. I had a good comeback. Well, I don't remember exactly what it was. But I you always have, you always, you're so witty. You always got great comebacks. Great comeback that let them know that life is still good. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> life is all good. And there's nothing that I can't do. Yeah, so yeah no doubt. And I just appreciate it. I just appreciate you. I mean, I always, you know, I tell everyone, I tell you that when I speak to you, but, you know, I just want everyone to know who's listening and who's going to listen that I appreciate you and you are definitely, you know, a transforming power. So let's get started. Tell us Thank a little bit about Clyde and, and what you're up to. Give us your journey. Um, well, I'm, I'm from the Midwest. I'm from right next door to you. I'm from Indiana. Um, grew up there and um, I, I was on a path, you know, like maybe a, I won't say a lot because it's a general statement, but, you know, young brothers in, in, in the community and I was on a path and the military was my, my, my escape. And so I thought I was going to join the Air Force <laughs> and I got there and the Air Force recruiter wasn't there and I ran into a Marine recruiter and he started talking trash and I was like, okay. And I went and told my friends and I was like, they're like, bro, you better go to the Air Force because if you go to the Marines, they're going to kill you. Right. You know, um, nobody can tell you anything. You know, you, you're hard headed. You always want to fight. So. Um, so I went back and joined the Marines. <laughs> right. Because I'm going to if you tell me I can't do it, I'm going to go do it. And, and, um, and, you know, the thing that's funny, Taryn, is like I had, you know, I'm from Indiana. If you had put a gun to my head and said, tell me where India is. I'd have been like, pull the trigger, right? Because I had no idea, I knew nothing about the world, had no interest in the world, because um, nobody in my family had ever been anywhere in the world. My uncle went to Vietnam, and he was killed in Vietnam. So that was the furthest anybody in my family had ever gone, and that didn't work out well, right? So, you know, um, so for me, I was like, I, want, I wanted to travel, and, and I, I said I wanted to go, but India was a place that said I wanted to go, even though I knew nothing about it, right? Um, and I wanted to go to Brazil, and I wanted to go to Scandinavia and um, <clears throat> all because I'd seen things in magazines or whatever, but I didn't like, if you said what continent was it, what continent was it on? I couldn't tell you, you know, um, I couldn't, I couldn't have told you anything because I didn't know anything about the world. Um, I knew my world, my little block, right? I knew Indiana. I knew, and I knew Alabama because we went to Alabama to see my grandparents every summer. Okay. And, uh, but I ended up joining the Marines and everything, every place I wanted to go, I ended up going Little did I know that the only way to get the pl to the places I wanted to go was only through the Marines, right? And I ended up in India, Brazil, Switzerland, and um, Hawaii, and, um, and then out here in California. And so my whole, the first 10 years of my life was my whole dream from the time I was 16, right? I know why I wanted to go to India. I saw Indian wedding. And they had on the, all the colors. And I thought the women, you know, were beautiful. And I was like, my whole life, I was 16. So my whole life within, at that point was <laughs> all driven. It was all women driven, right? So, and, uh, and so I ended up going to, going to the Marines and seeing that part of the world. And then um, I was in Hawaii. And I, was, I got pulled over by Honolulu police. And I said, um, so the guy called me a liar. And I, was, and I was a sergeant in the Marines at the time. And I was like, who are you to question my integrity? Right. And we went back and forth to the point that we were almost at blows. And another officer pulls up, separates us and um, pulls up, separates us. And hey, Erica, how are you? Um, yes, and uh, <laughs> Hi, everyone. Um, 
She's so dope. She does, um, she does um, for our program, she does um, sound healing. She does sound baths. Well, I'll have to have her, Erica. You'll have to get in contact with me. <laughs> um, and and we, went, we, went to, we went to School of Hypnotherapy together, too. And um, so um, what was I saying? Oh, so the, I got pulled over by Honolulu Police. And so his partner come, pulls up, sends me on my way. And as I'm walking back to my car, a, a homeless black man in Hawaii on the Waikiki Strip tells me, brother, if you don't do something about it, you're part of the problem. And, and when I turned back around, he was nowhere to be seen, right? And um, <clears throat> that was a Saturday for a Sunday. That Monday, I wa- I, uh, one of my buddies walks in, drops the Navy Times on my desk. I open it up. L.A. County Sheriff's is hiring. I join the L.A. County Sheriff's, and the rest, is, <laughs> the rest is history. And then I come out here to L.A. I'm doing my thing. And I was like, hey, I wanted, always wanted to do acting. I, I, I did that. I, you know, I had five national commercials. And then as an Ebony Bachelor, I did a couple of Mel calendars, uh, Mel exotic calendars. And then I, I, I was like, okay, I did it all. I did everything that I wanted to do. And, and, um, but I was still unfulfilled. I'd done all these things here, but I was really unfulfilled in, in my life. And, but I didn't know what it was. It was like, okay, well, maybe I'll get another girlfriend. Maybe that would be it. That wasn't it. And well, maybe if I make more money, that'll be it. That wasn't it. And then um, fast forward into my, um, probably like 17th year into the sheriff's department, a young kid was killed in the city of Compton where I worked. And, um, and it was the first time I felt helpless. Like I didn't make a difference. Yeah. And, um, and so it was like, God, there's gotta be a better way. You know, there's gotta be something. Cause when I came on the department in 1991, we had 18, 19,000 people in custody. Here we are in, 2007, we got 18, 19,000 people in custody. We got to do something better. And so um, from, I want to say like two years later, two years later, um, no, it was, 2000, so it was 2007, not 17, 2007. So 2009, I created a program called Emerging Leaders, mm-hmm. which we start, start working with people coming out of prison. Never thought I'd be doing anything like that. And, um, and, you know, to this date, we've had, you know, a 77% success rate. We had over 4,000 people go through our program and haven't reoffended or gone back to prison, you know? So, um, and that's, and I, and, and I got that that's where my, that's where my, my heart is. That's where my love was because there's so many young brothers and sisters out there and Latino cats that, and, you know, actually I work with everybody from Aryan Brotherhood to um, Bloods, Crips, Mexican mafia. I work with everybody. Um, you know, America's most wanted to, um, just a guy that had a violation, you know, uh, put on probation. Right. And, um, and, uh, and so that's, that's where I found my love. That's my passion. That's what I read. I, I left $70,000 on the table, leaving the sheriff's department to come back and, um, and to do what I'm doing now. As a matter of fact, that's where I'm just getting home from there. I just did a class with a recovery program down in Orange County, you know, working one side is like hardcore cats and the other side are people who are, um, who have money that can, that can pay for recovery. But, um, you know, just getting people to n- not give them anything. Cause I think we all have everything. It's just getting people to remember who they are. Mm-hmm. Cause a, a lot of times we forget. And like some of my clients now, like I have a coaching business and a lot of my clients now are people are, are successful. It's not like there's anything wrong with them. There's just something missing. Right. And it's, and it's having people tap back in. Like my life is perfect until I compare my life to yours. Right. And I go, I want to be like Taryn, but I'm not supposed to be Taryn. I'm supposed to be Clyde. Right. <laughs> and that's, I think, you know, that's, you know, people comparing themselves to someone else is like the, the, the thief of the thief of um, fulfillment. Right. Cause I, cause I want to be someone else, but I'm not here to be someone else. I'm here to be me. Right. And so let me step into my divine purpose. And that's what I've done. I've stepped into my divine purpose and I feel, I feel more fulfilled now and I feel richer now than when I was making money. Yeah. I think one of the things that you do, that's interesting that you do is, um, so you 
you are fulfilling your purpose. You help others fulfill their purpose. But I remember, I don't mm -hmm. know exactly what, you know, exactly what the conversation was between you and I or between anybody and, and yourself. But one thing you do um, with grace, I guess, from, from a woman's perspective, but I don't know what men would call it, is you challenge people on mm -hmm. their um, lack of being themselves. I guess that's the best, the best mm -hmm. way to... You know, you, you'll, you'll challenge. Mm. I'll say, oh, Clyde, oh. And you'll be like, <laughs> I mean, even, you know, when you call your, your voicemail, it's like, tell me something great you've done for you. Tell me something great about your life. So it's like, when I call you, I got to be prepared. It's, a, it's just, yeah, tell, tell, tell me one thing. Um, tell me one thing you love about your life. Yeah, tell me one thing. So when it's like, when I call you, I'm like, man, I got to leave a message. Mm -hmm. I got to be prepared. And it challenges <laughs> you to think like, okay, what thing do I love about my life, you know, right at this moment? Right. And so tell us a little bit, I mean, that's, you know, we, the next question was going to be, you know, give us some lessons maybe that you've learned and then following that up with lessons you would share with, uh, with other people. But maybe share a little bit about that, like how you, you know, how, how, how that is, you know, how do you think about to think, you know, I'm going to challenge people. And, and, and I think with mm -hmm. challenging others, you've probably had to challenge yourself. You know, all, all the time, all, yeah. all the time. It doesn't, there's not a day that goes by. So I was, I did a, um, a zoom call for a friend of mine, um, uh, about a week ago, actually a week ago today. And, um, and I looked on, there's all these beautiful people on here. Right. And it's, it, and, um, and, uh, and so she wanted me to work on mindset. And then there's just something that just moved through me, like move out of the way. Like, just move out of the way and just let spirit flow, flow through you. And I start talking and like all these people are crying and I'm crying and I'm like, whoa, where did that come from? But it was really tapping into this young lady, getting her to see like, like, what is it like? who was the person that I loved the most? Like who was the person I wanted to get the most from like my mom or my dad. Mm -hmm. And she realized it was one of her, like it was her mother and what she wanted from her. And now she does that for everybody. Right. So I'm like, so instead of that being your, instead of that being your, um, your curse, it's really a blessing. It's really your gift. It's access to something. Mm -hmm. And what she got access to was that her purpose on the planet is to guide people. Okay. Right. And, and so what she wanted from her mom was, 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 um, uh, uh, to be affirmed by her mom and to be appreciated by her mom. Right. But what, what she realized and I was like, and you do it for everybody else. She's like, I do. And, I, and she says, so I said, and even when people screw you over, you go, I'm not going to do it anymore. And then you still do it. Right. Well, that's your gift. That's somewhere in there is your gift. Somewhere in there is what your what, it was your contract. When you came to the planet, that was your contract. Mm -hmm. Right. So instead of me running from that thing, let me embrace it. And let me find my, my, let me find my, my dream inside of that. Right. And so I wanted, as a kid, I wanted guidance. I wanted direction. And, and that's what I do is I give that, I, I help people find their direction. Their gift. Cause we all have no, no one on the planet. Taryn can, can tell us anything. We all have everything. God, we, we came loaded and coded with everything. Mm -hmm. Right. And so it, it's not like someone can say, well, I can give you this. Nobody can give you anything. Right. We have it all. It's just what is it that Oprah has that she's been able to tap into that thing? But I haven't mm -hmm. or you haven't. Right. So it's really looking together and like me holding someone's hand to walk them through this journey until they see it now. And, and I tell people, look, fly, w fly with me until you can fly on your own. Or I'm going to fly with Taryn until I can fly on my own. I'm going to fly with somebody that I, I, I admire and appreciate. I'm going to fly with them until I can fly on my own. Mm -hmm. so, so if someone, so like I said, so if someone were to ask you like one or two, I mean, you, you have a lot of words of wisdom and you've said a lot, but if you, if mm -hmm. you sum them up into one or two words of advice or sentences of advice, do you have any like, you know, um, you know, like I said, I mean, I, I feel like you've said so much, but is there anything that you would say right. you've learned or advice for someone else who could be like, uh, and I'm trying to figure out how to fly, man. You know, right? Like, well, I, I'm I'm gonna take I'm I'm a, I'm gonna I'm gonna steal this from Lisa Nichols. She's a good friend of mine. But but um, she said, you know, you are your rescue. 
You are your rescue. There's nobody coming, right? There's nobody coming to save you. So if you don't do it, it won't get done, right? And so you are your rescue. And so, you know, um, so it's having me look within. It's having me have the difficult conversations with myself that I don't want to have, right? Mm -hmm. But on the other side of that conversation is success. On the other side of that conversation is everything that I want. Right. So the, the, like the, 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 the flower that's trying to grow when you put fertilizer and it doesn't say, no, that shit there. I'm not going to go through that shit. I don't want to smell like that. It mm-hmm. uses the fertilizer and it comes through it. Right. And because of it, it's, it's rich. And so it's like, you're going to have to go through your shit, right? You're going to have to go through it, be willing to go through it. Cause the more you try to avoid it, the more you're going to be stuck with what you've always had. You got to go through it. I think, that, I think actually you told me that one time that you have to kind of, you have <laughs> You have to go, you probably told me that multiple times actually, but right. <laughs> um, you know, and I think that's like so important because a lot of times you a, try to avoid it, um, B, you don't have it, mm-hmm. right? or, you know, see all of the above. So I think that's important to, for people to realize that they have to, you know, go through some stuff. And I like you are your rescue that we all have, mm. you know, we all have what it takes, right? We all have it in us. Right. So well, well, it's, it's that thing, it's that, it's that thing that what you resist persists. So the more you resist life, the more you resist, you know, that thing, right? So, so here's the thing. Some people are givers, right? And they like, I'm not going to give anymore because when you give the people, they think you're weak. Mm-hmm. Well, if you're a giver and you're going to, you're going to keep on doing it, right? So like, stop and find the gift in it. Like, and, and if you find one person that appreciates your giving, then that's going to trump all the, no pun intended, um, that, that's going to that's gonna trump all the people who didn't appreciate you, mm-hmm. right? So it's, let me, and the other thing, I, I think this is big. Every time something happens to me now, I don't go, why is this happening to me? I'm like, this is happening for me. Mm. And then when I look around, I can find the gift in it because someone ran into my car um, in 2011. Now, before that, I'd watched The Secret, and I, I, I didn't know anybody in The Secret. Um, and I thought, oh, this is pretty dope. And then someone ran into the back of my car, and long story short, five months later, I end up meeting Michael Beckwith. Oh, okay. And now he's my mentor. I'm with him every Sunday. Yeah. Lisa Nichols is a friend of mine. I've gotten to meet other people from The Secret. And so, um, but had I been like, oh, this is messed up. I can't believe somebody ran into the back of me. And, you know, why me? I would have only seen all the misery that that would have led me to. When I was like, okay, there's got to be a reason for this. Because there's never, like, there's, the world has balance. So let me, let me look for the gift in this. And... I ended up meeting him and through him, I met, I met more people and I've been able to really tap into my like spiritual teachings and and just really begin to do the work to look at myself. Huh? You're getting some good thumbs up. What's that? You're getting some thumbs up. Oh, thank you. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So it's, it's, um, especially now, I mean, like I, I can't remember where in scripture it says, but where it like 400 years, So 400 years, you're supposed to come from under the oppression. Um, And so we're at the 401st year. So if we're not conscious moving into the future, then we'll be stuck where we've been, right? So it's time for us to really step into our power as a people. We can't be the victims of America and the victims of society and racism and all that stuff. They they still exist. It's It's not to ignore them. It's just that we have a greater purpose. And we've endured so much stuff that we get to be the example for people, Mm -hmm. right? We get to, we get to be the way showers, right? And so, um, so yeah, I, I, I've been given a gift and I, and I've stepped into my gift. And like I said, I, I was making, you know, six figures. I let, um, I left almost $70,000 on the table to come and do what I love. Right. And the reward is the reward is, is, (laughs) <laughs> has given me more than my job could have ever given me. And I, and I, I enjoyed my 25 years, but I, I realized that I had to learn the streets and what I learned in the streets. And I had to go through all the things I had to go through in order to be able to have conversations with cats that are, that are killers. If you want to 
you know, call it that. Um, and, you know, one of my goals is I, I, I'm going to put this out to the ethos now for 2021 is one of my goals is to like, how do we transform Chicago? Yeah. How do we, how do we, how do we, how do we transform that conversation? Mm -hmm. Right. And so that's what I'm committed to right now. I'm, I'm committed to that being my life's work, but also as I start, as you start to elevate your consciousness and start to raise, rise to another level, you start seeing that every, there's nothing separated, right? Like there's nothing separated. So then I, then I start seeing, okay, well, wow what I say to myself about myself to myself about my environment affects me at a, at a, at a, at a chemical level, right? My body begins to shift. So if I'm not in alignment with my environment, if I'm not in alignment with the people who are around me, I'm lowering my vibration. I'm, and my body becomes, so when you talk about like Hertz or um, if you're below 58 Hertz, your body becomes susceptible to disease. Mm -hmm. If you're 60, 62 to 78 hertz, I think it is, your body's in like the top, you know, top frequency for your body. So my, my goal is to raise my frequency. But then as I start looking at that, that also indicates how healthy you're going to be. So I start looking at frequency medicine and you know, how, how do we bring that into our community so that we stop running to the doctors and having them shove us full of, you know, pharmaceuticals, mm -hmm. right? And so that's been like, everything just unfolds. Like, so you're what, like, you're what you're doing now, right? It's preparing you for your, your TV show, right? And so it's like, you, you start here and then that unfolds and then that unfolds and that unfolds and that unfolds. And, and you go like, when you look back, you reverse engineer it, you go, wow, that's how I got here. Right. Yeah. And so, so my goal is to bring um, frequency medicine or frequency healing into the community, but um, from a scientific, not, not from some woo woo stuff, even though that's good, but, but like there's systems out there now that, that, send frequencies into the body that takes you back to the state of being in the womb, right? Um, where it's helped people heal Parkinson's, um, it's uh, people with dementia. So um, I'm excited about that. That's the next evolution of Clyde Terry. So that, that's, that's, that's what I'll... We got about three huh? minutes. That was my last question is what does the future hold for you? I mean, I'm, I'm all with you definitely in the, you know, transforming. I. I, you know, I, that's one of the things with, with a lot I do, you know me already, but even mm -hmm. with starting the show, you know, it's, it's just about reaching people, right? It's about living right. a purpose. It's about sharing stories. It's about learning. It's about all those things that I hope that people are getting from the show. And the overwhelming response lets me know that they are getting it. And I'm very, you know, a, a blessed to have it. So that was my, right. my last question was, and we got about two more minutes. Any more, and so I've also learned I am my rescue. So I'm going to take that with me. <laughs> and I'm right. also going to learn, I'm also going to take with me that the things that I think are a curse are in actuality a blessing. Right. Um, and I think that's a big one for Taryn because I, you know, I have been through a lot. So sometimes I, you know, sometimes every now and then as, as people and humans, you fall back into that. And I do a pretty good job myself of snapping out of it. I mean, I've, I've, I think I've done a pretty good job of snapping out of it, but it's always, You're dope. Oh, thank you. It's always good to remember that, you know, something that I, you know, have thought, wow, why me, right. Has turned into my story, has turned into this, has turned in what I do, right. turned into my purpose. So any right. more, um, things on what the future holds or, or final comments we have one more minute. Okay. Well, the future's, uh, the, the future's, um, infinite for me. I, I just, I, I think this year is going to be a really dope year for me. Um, um, just opportunity wise. I just like, I feel that. Um, and I think this is like the genesis of it. This is, this is the beginning of it. As a matter of fact, another friend of mine, um, wants me to do something with him this coming Saturday. <laughs> so it's, um, but I, I'll say this, that um, we have a, um, I can't think of the way I want to say this right now, but we have, a, we made a contract with God many years ago, mm. centuries ago, right? So three, let's say 3,000 years ago, I'm just using numbers, say 3,000 years ago, you said, God, my contract is to come to earth and do this. And God said, Taryn, you're going to go through all these things. And you said, okay, I got you. And 
and you said, and, 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 you, and, and you said, I got to be born to my mom and my dad, not Clyde's mom and dad, but my mom and my dad, right? So that I can live my purpose. Mm-hmm. So, so I think when we get here, we forgot that we signed a contract and we came for a purpose. We get caught in our circumstances. And you've been so really good at, at, at like taking your circumstances and, and, and like remembering your purpose. Mm-hmm. And you've taken all the things like since I've known you, you've always taken those things and, 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 perp- and repurposed those things. Right. And that's why you're doing what you're doing now. You're able to touch people because you've been able to take that because you could easily you could have thrown you could have thrown your hat in a long time ago and said, look, I'm done. Right. I, I, I thought I beat this. And then this came. I thought I beat this. And then like how much more, God? Come on. Right. But like, this is your purpose. This is why you came. Right. And I think so much that we forget that we, we came here for a purpose and we forget our purpose and we get stuck in a circumstance. Right. And we never escape the circumstance, but realizing that life is never happening to me. It's always happening for me. Life is happening for me. Right. Because you will be like, oh, my God, I can't believe this has happened. But let me stop and go, OK, well, what, what's the what's the there's a gift here somewhere. Let me find the gift. Right. Like if, and, and here's the thing. And, and I'll end with this. Whenever we say there is no way, there's no way we block out the way. Mm. Right. When I say I can't see the way, but I know there's a way there's it's possible. There's a way here somewhere. I just can't see it right now. It now opens my eyes to what's possible. Right. And then I can start to see things that I couldn't see before. But once I say, you know, it's like when a person has their phones, like I can't find my phone and people are like, aren't you on it? <laughs> you know, or like you have your sunglasses on your head and you're like, where are my glasses? And it's like they're on your head or I can't find my keys and you got them in your hand. Once you block it out, once you say something to yourself with such conviction, your unconscious mind says, don't worry about it, Taryn. We got this. We'll make sure you don't see it. Right. right? Everybody else can see it, but you can't see it. Right. So. So. I, I, I would leave people with this. Whatever's happened to you is part of your contract. Now find a gift in it, right? Life is never happening to you. <clears throat> it's always happening for you, right? Look for the gift in it. If you look for the misery, you'll find the misery. If you look for the gift, you'll find the gift. Life is never happening to you, people. It's happening for you. Mm-hmm. Don't forget about the Clyde. Would you, I mean, it's fast, right? Like we're done, that's it. It's a half an hour. I mean, right. it's done, but this is done. So I just want to thank, thank everyone, for, first of all, for joining. I see Anita. I see Lisa. I see C. I see a couple people I don't know. But thank you all for doing it. You guys, thank you for um, just, you know, helping, helping me, helping you, living your purpose. <laughs> Appreciate each and every one of you. Clyde, we are going to put this on IGTV. So I'm going to send all this to you. I'm going to put it on YouTube. And I feel like one more place, but my brain can't think. IGTV, my, the, our stories, you know, all that good stuff. Right. The, the link, I'm going to, of course, um, give you a buzz in a sec. But I just want to thank you again. And I want to thank you, Taryn, and thank you, Clyde. Yes, Tony, we both. Thank you. Welcome. Great message, Clyde. Uh, thank you, Lisa. You might, do you thank know you. Clyde, Lisa? You guys know each other. I don't know. You guys might know each other. If not, you should know each other. Um, cause Lisa's okay. in LA and she does big, so is Tony. So anyway, okay. um, Clyde, I love you to pieces. Thank you so much. I truly appreciate your time. I mean, I know that, um, you know, you're, you're, you're there for me whenever I need it. So, but I, I do want to tell everyone that I do appreciate your time. You're, you're such a blessing. And, um, like I said, I mean, you're, you're, you're one that not just talks that you walk it. So that is I love you for that. Well, we we got work we got work to do, we got we work do. to do. So we have to yeah. be here for and, sure. And, in town. Yeah, for sure. So what, whatever 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 it takes. Yeah. One, oh, we met at the Urban League. Yeah, that's that's yeah. Okay. So dope. I felt like you guys knew each other. I couldn't remember how, but I felt like you guys knew each other. Yeah. So thank you very much again. We'll see everybody back here next Tuesday, seven thirty p.m. Remember, if you have a story. And as Clyde said, we all know you do. I'd love to have you be a guest on the show. Please make sure you get a hold of me. And I'd love to have you on the show. We are booking guests into 2021, June of 2021. So thank you very much. Let me, let me, let me say this. Yeah. 
um, everybody get, um, go get you some um, either blue algae, blue green algae um, or Corella. Um, what's the other? Spirulina mix. Okay. Get you some zinc and get um, nano. Uh, oh, I can't think. It's, it's, it's water. It's um, nano. S- nano silver. Na- nano silver. Okay. Right? Um, because they, they help alkaline the body. It, it helps. And, and drink some, um, I don't want to promote somebody's water, but Essentia is the only one I can think of right now because it's 9.5. Okay. It helps the body stay alkaline. And from what I understand, the, um, the COVID spikes can't connect to it in an alkaline body. So, um, so do the things you need to do in order to help um, y- your body fight off the threats of COVID and a- as well as doing all the other things that, okay. that we have to be responsible for. So anyway. Thank you, my dear. Thank you. I'm going to talk to you. I love, love you. Okay. Peace. Bye-bye. Love you too. Bye.